Sophie from Scrumbles Crafts and welcome to the latest video in my How To Crochet series. For today's tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to work the treble crochet stitch. That is UK treble crochet. In the US, this is referred to as double crochet. The treble crochet is used for many different blanket patterns and it's probably one of my favourite stitches. It gives a lovely texture just on its own and it's so simple and easy to learn. For today's tutorial, I'm going to be using this paint box Simply Aran yarn. You can get this from lovecrafts.com and I'll put a link in the description for this video. This is colour 247, which I believe is pansy purple. I'm also going to be using a 5mm hook and again I'll put a link in the description for where you can find these hooks. Now to start with what we need to do is we need to make our foundation row. In this case our foundation row is one chain to every treble plus three chains for our very first stitch. So this is a simple swatch where I've just made 12 trebles plus one for the starting chain. So you would decide how long you want this blanket to be and however many chains you'll need to make it that width. Okay, so we'll start off by making a slip knot. So to do that, we wrap the yarn around our first finger, bring it back over itself, pull up the first loop, pull through that back loop, and then pull to make a knot. Insert our hook and then pull on this long length of yarn to tighten up our knot. You don't want to make this too tight though because we still need to be able to move the hook through it quite freely. Now depending on the length that you want to make your blanket, you'll need to make n number of stitches. So if I want this to be 10 stitches wide, I need 10 chains plus 3 more for my starting stitch. So we go yarn over, pull through for chain 1, yarn over, pull through for chain 2, yarn over, pull through for chain 3, pull through, yarn over. And you want to keep doing this until you reach the number of repeats. So if you pause the video and meet me back once you've made your chain of your desired length and then I'll show you what to do next. Alright then, so I've made my chain here of 12 chains long. Obviously if you're making this for a blanket you'll probably want to make it a bit longer but for the purposes of this tutorial this will be sufficient. So having made the number of chains that you want we're then just going to go ahead and add three more chains to that. So one, two, three. So these three chains will form our first stitch of row one. So now to start actually working into this, what we'll do is we're going to work into the fourth chain from our hook. Now I count my chains using this bottom loop here. So if I lay that down, so here I would count that as my, my chain one, two, three, and four. You can also count it from the top loop, so we've got one, two, three, and four. Now you can either work underneath this loop here, but I actually prefer to work underneath both loops, so I work into this gap here. So working underneath both the top loop of that chain and the second loop as well. This just gives a neater finish to that first row, because what you find is if you work into only this top row, it will stretch out your row one and you'll see quite a few holes whereas this keeps it nice and tight and it masks our foundation chain so now working into that fourth loop what we're going to do is we're going to first yarn over your hook we're then going to work so counting along so one so one two three and four now i'm going to work under both loops but you can just work under the top loop so going in here so you'll see that if I work under both loops, I have the two loops on my hook. You should be able to see those there. So we've got two loops plus these two. And then I'm going to yarn over again. And I'm going to pull that through. So now I've got three loops on my hook. I'm then going to yarn over once more pull that through the first two loops so that then leaves me with just two loops left on the hook and then finally I yarn over again and I pull through those two loops 
And now we've made our first treble. So now I'm going to work directly into the next stitch. So going into here, I'm going to yarn over again, and I'm going to insert my hook underneath both loops, so it looks like that. Yarn over again, pull through, yarn over, pull through both loops, and then pull through the final two loops. And then we have our second treble. An easy way to remember that this is the treble crochet stitch is after our initial pull through, we're left with three loops on our hook. And so then we yarn over again, and we're going to pull through those first two loops, yarn over, and pull through two again. And so what we're going to do is we're going to continue working along this chain until we reach the end of the row. So if we go again, yarn over, insert into that next stitch, yarn over, pulling it through, yarn over, pulling through those first two, and then yarn over, pulling through those last two. And once more, yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And remember, whenever I'm saying yarn over, I'm moving the hook away from me and then back over that yarn. You always want to be working, moving that hook away from you and then pulling that yarn through, picking up that yarn as you come past, like so. So I'm going to carry on working along this row, so feel free to pause the video and then I'll meet you back at the end of the row. So I've come back a little early because I wanted to show you something about the yarn. So occasionally, this happens in any type of yarn I've had, no matter how expensive or cheap it is, you'll find that two strands of yarn have been knotted together. Now I never trust the manufacturer's knots. They're not very strong and they actually can quite easily be pulled apart. So I like to cut this up and re-knot it myself. Now to do that, so I'm just going to snip that off like so. Now I'm just going to go back a stitch, just there. I'm going to put my hook in just so it holds my stitch in place. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay these, so we've got that one, and we've got this new one, and I'm going to lay them like so. And I'm going to take this, and I'm going to rest it over the top, and then bring it underneath both strands of yarn, so we have this loop, and then I'm going to work it back through, put it back through that loop there, and pull it tight. And then I'm going to repeat this for this end as well. So what I'm going to do again, looping over, looping underneath, tuck that through, and pull tight. So now you've got these two tails and your yarn is joined. We then take these two bits of our yarn and we just pull them until the knots meet in the middle. Now it's up to you, you can either cut this here or, which is what I like to do, is I leave these tails and I sew those in later. Just adds a little extra, extra security to your knot. So now with the knot in place, we can continue working our treble crochets and we're just going to put that knot into one of our stitches. And when it comes to finishing off your projects and sewing in the ends, you won't be able to see that knot at all. And so if we just have a look, if you turn that over, it's quite well hidden, and then once we sew in those ends, you really won't be able to tell where that knot was. Okay, so I have just two stitches remaining on this row. So again, I've yarn over, inserting my hook, yarn over, pulling through two, yarn over, pulling through two. Let's get some more yarn. And then again, finally into this final chain here. So this one might be a little bit trickier because this was your slip knot. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And there we have our first row. To move on to row two, we're first going to make a chain three. So one, two, three. We're then going to turn our work. Now I like to turn my work anti-clockwise, so I'm going to turn it away from myself, 
I'm then going to yarn over and now we're not going to work into this stitch at the bottom of our chain three. We're instead going to work into this next stitch here. So yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over, pull through, three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through the first two loops on the hook, yarn over, pull through those last two loops on the hook. And there we have the beginning of row two. And we're going to continue like this along the row, always making sure we're inserting our hook underneath both loops, so you'll have like a V on your hook, pulling that yarn through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And just constantly going along this row, constantly going along this row, working into each of the next stitches. So yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And again, so yarn over, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And so we're going to keep doing this again. And if you want to just pause just before this last stitch, and I'll show you how to finish off your row two. I'm now back at the end of my row two, so I just have one, two, three stitches remaining to do. So if I yarn over, insert my hook, yarn over, pull through those first two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, insert my hook and pull through, pull through two, pull through two. Now this final stitch here is actually our starting chain from the foundation chain. So this one I like to work into this spot here so I can show you. So you've got this loop here and then you've got this loop so I like to go underneath those two when working my final treble. So we're going to yarn over again and then I'm going to insert my hook just like so. Yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And there we have our row two. So now similarly as before, when we were finishing off row one, we're going to chain one, two, and three. We're then going to turn our work away from us and we're going to work into the stitch, not at the base of our chain, but next to our chain. And so now we've started row three. And just as you did for row two, working into each of those stitches at each of the tops of the stitches of row two, yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. And again, we're gonna continue that along the row and I'll meet you just before that last stitch and I'll show you how to finish off your row. All right, so I just have two stitches remaining here on my row three. So I'm just going to yarn over, insert my hook, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And now we're working again into this chain here. So what I want to do is I'm going to work into this space here. So I'm going to yarn over, insert my hook, so inserting my hook there, pull through, Yarn over again, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and then there we have our finished row three. Now what you need to do is just continue as you did for row three, as many times as you need to reach the desired length that you want for your blanket. Then once you're happy with the length and you've finished the row, it's just a case of tying off. So what we do to tie off is we just chain one, and then we take your scissors, we're then going to just snip that yarn and then using your hook you're just going to pull that through and then tighten to form a knot. And there you have your finished piece. If you like this tutorial and you'd like to see more then please do subscribe to my channel and as always let me know in the comments if there's another tutorial that you would like to see in the future. Until next time, happy crocheting!